Greetings and welcome back once again everybody to Enlightenment to All on YouTube. Today, I want to be discussing a news article that came across the wire today. They are now claiming that the Gadsden flag is racist and has origins with slavery as 90% of the nation is still a debt slave and enslaved to debt. The media is really going to target and go off about this now, honestly. So let's bring this up for you folks. And I quote, 12-year-old boy booted from class over Gadsden flag patch on backpack. Origins with slavery. School administrators told boy's mother patch has racial implications that could bother other kids. It never bothered other kids until cancel culture started getting into our public schools and brainwashing them. If we want to Let's hear what he has to say. Our flag for our country, then we should be able to. It's not like it has any hate or profanity to it, and I just think it's bullcrap myself. 17 year old. There you go. I think that that young man is speaking his mind and saying the truth. And I think that he was unjustly targeted. This 12 year old, not the one that spoke. The one that just spoke was a different individual. The 12 year old probably will be making the media soon, and they're going to make him the new poster boy as the media tends to do. So yeah, we're dealing with that now, America. The Gadsden flag, which has long been a symbol of freedom, liberty, justice, equality in the United States, is now being displayed by the media as a racist and hateful thing. Could it be any more ridiculous? You all know my thoughts on it. You all know my opinions. I'm in my fatigues. I understand that we're at war. I understand that the COVID mandates are coming back again, and there are going to be those who continue to display that they are pathetic, gutless, witless slaves who will comply with anything. I promise you I won't be one of them. So something else I wanted to discuss today, I want to keep this video brief is what happened in Maui, and also what happened right here in Washington State, just five miles south of here, the entire city of Medical Lake burned down. The media and SHIELD will say, oh no, it wasn't the whole city that burned down. Shut the fuck up. You're lying. You're full of shit. And we saw what happened in Maui. There is a media blackout there right now. There's been no independent inv investigation as to what happened. There have been no soil samples that have been gathered to test for any types of what could be potential arson, or as more and more people are suspecting and questioning, DEW, do weapons, direct energy weapons, or laser technology. So I want to show you folks an infographic I put together about a week ago. Something that nobody else seems to be able to connect the dots and put together. Certainly not the media, as everywhere I've tried to share this image, it has been censored, blacklisted, slandered labeled as dis or misinfo. So let's take a look at this now, shall we? I want you folks to take a good look at this and what I'm showing you here. I cited all the sources and the dates. I want you to pay close attention to the dates. So we start with popular mechanics here. China flash mysterious green lasers over Hawaii, NASA says. The Chinese pollution monitoring satellite DAQI-1 probably produced the lights spotted over Hawaii on January 28th. This date is important, remember that. According to a NASA scientist, the comments apparently put to rest earlier theories the lights were coming from a U.S. satellite. Okay, so January 28th, that's when these lasers were flashed over Hawaii. The date of the article from Popular Mechanics is dated February 21st. That's important. Any good independent journalist knows that these dates are important. 
So this article was published almost a month after these lasers were seen over Hawaii. So here, same day, people, same day, January 28, 2023, the very same day that these lasers were first reported over Hawaii from a Chinese satellite, that was the same day that the Chinese balloon was first spotted over United States territory. And as we all know, that balloon was allowed to drift over Alaska, Canada, and the continental United States, gathering God knows how much intel. And the weak, treasonous Biden administration simply allowed it to do this, which is absolute treason. So here we see the path of the Chinese surveillance balloon, approximate path, across the United States and Canada between January 8th and February 4th, 2023. Now, first of all, I will note that this balloon drifted from Hawaii, everybody. So that means not only were there lasers flashed over Hawaii, this balloon also drifted over Hawaii and was gathering intel, undoubtedly logistics and ground intel. So you can see right here the path in the red line as it drifts from Hawaii to Alaska through the Yukon, British Columbia, parts of Alberta, and into the continental United States. Now, as I aforementioned, we are blanketed in wildfire smoke here. There are wildfires all around us. The entire city of Medical Lake, Washington, burned down about a week ago. I can see the smoke from here. I have several pictures of it. First of all, wildfire danger is nothing new to our area here. We deal with it every year. It's nothing new the high winds, the dry weather. And we've never had an entire city burned down before. So I think that is worth questioning. The emergency response was horrendous, which led to the entire city burning down. The air quality here reached as high as 500, which is extremely hazardous. There were people wandering around outside here, walking their dogs, going about their daily business, completely oblivious to the risk. I had to go out and get water, of course, so I had to wear my gas mask as I have respiratory issues. And naturally, as I went to the store in my gas mask, everybody was looking at me like I'm fucking crazy, when in fact, I'm the only one that's really offering myself any type of protection from the toxic air, because who the hell knows what's in the air? It's not just wildfire smoke that's burning. Nobody seems to question what buildings were burned. And as citizen journalists try to answer these questions, they are barred from producing any media in these blackout zones. Isn't that suspicious? And of course, the government has plausible deniability. The police have plausible deniability. We're respecting the victims, so we can't put out media here. Always, always has plausible deniability to try and get you to question yourself, your intuition. So now here's the biggest kicker here, everybody. Look at where all of the most severe wildfires have burned on this map. And look at where the path of this Chinese spy balloon satellite was reported. They are nearly identical. Now, is that a coincidence? First of all, lasers of Hawaii, Jan 28th. Also, Jan 28th, the first day, the balloon was reported, U.S. territory. The path of the balloon, nearly identical to where all these fires are burning. The worst fires, excuse me. And as we have seen, there's been media coming out of Canada. These fires all seem to be starting around the same time. Is that a coincidence? Of course, the media has already concocted a perfect explanation. It's dry. It's windy. It's hotter than it's ever been before. Climate change is to blame here. What is climate change? What is climate change, everybody? Climate change is weaponized weather against civilian people. That's exactly what climate change is. They are controlling all of this. The hurricanes, the floods, the tornadoes, the storms, the lightning. All of that is being manufactured. And if you cannot wrap your mind around that, then truly you are lost, and truly you are a brainwashed slave. 
and you are pathetic and you are a joke, or you are part of the same entity that is using that weapon against the people and you are basically informed and instructed by your cabal to discredit anything and everything that goes against cloud seeding, geoengineering, and terraforming. So as you all know, I've cited an article from the New York Times by one Seymour Hirsch, dated 1972. One of my favorite articles stating that the U.S. has been secretly cloud seeding over Vietnam to slow the Vietnamese troops' advance. I'm not sure if you people have the awareness of how much rain it takes to slow an advance of troops, but it is a substantial amount of rain. It's a lot of rain. So if the Air Force was cloud seeding heavy rain 50 years ago, over 50 years ago, why are they not cloud seeding right now to remedy all of these wildfires? It is the most logical and the most obvious answer to wildfires is rain. Why are they not using it, everybody? Because it is a weapon. Geoengineering, terraforming, cloud seeding, that's only to be used as a weapon. That's not to be used to save civilian lives. That's not to be used to save you from choking out about wildfire smoke. That's not to be used to save your home from burning down to ashes so the government can come in and seize the land or purchase the land at much cheaper value. That is because it is a weapon. And once you can connect those dots and you actually become compelled enough to research at the United States Patent Office how many registered patents there are for cloud seeding and geoengineering. In fact, there are even services now you can pay for private contractors to cloud seed at your wedding or at any series of events. Obviously, the prices are enormous. So again, if they're not using cloud seeding capabilities, which they've had, and they're just letting all the lands burn up, are they really serving and protecting we the people at this point? Is the United States Air Force serving and protecting we the people? Or are they serving and protecting their cabal? Because they're all fraternal cabalists. They all take oaths. They all wear uniforms. They all claim dominion and authority over you. And they all use this weaponized system of law against you. So, uh, that's about all I want to say for today, everybody. Just to review, the Gazden flag is now being portrayed as racist. Uh, fuck right off. If the Gazden flag offends you, then you are a fucking pathetic brainwashed slave, and you would do us all a favor to take yourself to the gallows and do yourself in. In all honesty, everybody. In all integrity, honesty, and virtue. This is what it's come to. We're at war. Are you going to keep complying? with all of these weapons of war and tools of war that are used against you until you are rounded up by the Gestapo and put into your little 15-minute city? Or are you finally going to realize there's only one answer to this corruption? And it's certainly not any Republican or Democrat. It's certainly not continuing to utilize our corrupted system of voting or our corrupted system of justice. It's the same answer that all free people came to know freedom from corrupt monarchies, cabals, tribes, republics. And it is the same solution that most all of you fucking cowards fear the most. It is combat. So again, like I've said from day one, everybody, when you people are finally ready to grow a pair and fight back, and you actually are ready to have a general among you who knows what needs to be done once we the people get inside the corrupt institutions, rather than taking fucking selfies and singing kumbaya outside the gate, or being rounded up by FBI plants in the Gestapo, then why don't you give me a call? Why don't you contact me? Obviously, I can't do it alone, and I'm not stupid enough to do it alone. We the people must work together. And when I say we must work together, truly, we must realize what we are up against, how diabolical it truly is. Most good-natured, good-hearted people cannot comprehend how diabolical this cabal is, how it uses these tactics of confusion, uh, of two-party fanatics and feudalism, of plausible deniability. They want you to question before you ever think about pointing the finger. And they want you to question forever, even as the evidence becomes overwhelming and obvious, as I just presented for you people. So there's only one answer. 
I'm still waiting for you pathetic slaves to get it. I don't see anybody out here talking about the same things I'm talking about. I never have. And I honestly don't think I ever will. Because apparently I'm the only one who's not truly a fucking coward. And is not afraid to speak the truth. As I have blown the whistle on the water contamination here in Arrow Heights and the cover up by the Air Force, killing people. As I have blown the whistle on the fluoridation of the water supply in Spokane, without the consent of we the people, without a vote of the public, something our own mayor, Nadine Woodward, who is just another turn faced traitor, called a robbery of the public. As I was becoming more active with the anti fluoride scene here, I met with a certain woman, her name was Gina McKenzie. She claims to be an anti-fluoride activist. As I met her in person, I was very suspicious of her immediately because she wore an imperial pin, which is a dead giveaway to her affiliations. There are double agents in every aspect. Anything that we the people have that can get us freedom, liberty, justice, there are double agents working against we the people to set you up, to frame you, Etc. So, uh, Miss McKenzie, if you're watching this, I hope you understand. I know who you are, and if you really thought that you were fooling me with anything, then clearly you are not on my level. And as for everyone else, uh, look into what I outlined for you today. Think about what I said. Is it time to grow a pair yet and a spine, or is it time to continue to comply and be a gutless, witless, pathetic slave coward? I do not fear death. I fear life living with gutless, witless, pathetic slave cowards. Please prove me wrong. Please show me you people have a spine and actually value integrity, justice, virtue, righteousness. Because when you take your last breath, you can't say that righteousness or virtue was inconvenient for you at that point, can you? And until next time, be well, everybody.